I'm back here with my Nano VNA. I want to do an SWR reading with it. And I thought I would go over what that process looks like. Uh, nothing's connected to the VNA right now. So as we turn it on with the little switch, you can just see there at the top. Uh, we get presented with all kinds of information. Um, we see at the top here, uh, different color coding, yellow, green, blue, and purple. Uh, of course, nothing's actually attached right now, so it doesn't mean anything. So we're going to get started by taking out the protective cover off port 1. Notice we have ports 1 and 2 here, which seems pretty clear, except that uh, underneath there it says S11 and S21. When we get into the software, we'll notice that the ports are actually referred to with those subheadings, the S11, and you can see there S21. So we've got our cover off here, and we're going to use the included guitar pick for to manipulate the touch screen. You can just touch there and it will bring up the menu. And when you use the display option here to remove some of the extra information since we only are going to make one measurement. Um, each one of these lines uh, is referred to as a trace and you can see them described here with the correct color. Um, the check mark tells us which trace we are configuring. So if we touch the blue one, for example, and then touch it again, Notice that they go away as we go through that process. So that's a nice, simple way to simplify how much information is on the screen. Then we're going to go back and we had trace zero selected. So with the little check mark that tells us when we do additional configuration on it, that is the trace that we are configuring. We're going to change the format of that. Notice again that it says it up here, S11 corresponding to port one. It's measuring log mag, so we want to change that. And we're going to go to format here in the menu. We'll go down here to SWR and then go back to our main menu. And then we're going to tell the device what range we want to measure. If you look at the very bottom of the screen, there's a start and we're measuring from 50 kilohertz all the way up to 900 megahertz. So much bigger than what we need. Um, and we can quickly change that by going to stimulus. We're going to go to uh, the start point we want to configure. We're going to type in a, for the VHF, which is what I'm going to measure here today. We'll start at 144 megahertz. And just simple like that. Notice you have gigahertz, megahertz, and kilohertz as options. We'll go to megahertz and notice down here at the bottom, it now says 144. So we have now configured the start point to where we want our sweep to start and we'll go back to menu and then we'll set the stop point. We can ignore the rest of those settings on that page for this um, particular exercise. We're going to go up to 148 megahertz again. And, and we can look down here at the bottom of the screen and notice that 148 is listed. Um, nothing is connected yet. So our reading is meaningless, but it is um, doing something up there. The next thing we need to do in order to get the correct or get an accurate reading, we must calibrate the device for the start and stop point that we've uh, set up. So go down to calibrate from the main menu. Notice here, um, there's a calibration reading. It says 50 kilohertz all the way up to 900 megahertz. So we already have a calibration that is being used. So we wanna clear that away before we initiate the next step of our process. You can also see on the other side here, um, some letters kind of indicating the same thing. And we'll be using the caps that come with your kit. Uh, we will be starting with the open. And you can see the correct order to do this in by, uh, again, if digging a little bit further down here in the menu to calibrate, and it'll tell you open, short, and load. So um, we'll start with our open. Notice that this uh, cap does not have a pin in it also known as the open. So we'll thread that on quickly and we will tap the open button with our guitar pick and watch at the very top of the screen as I do that a blue line goes across there give you a progress and we get a check mark indicating that that task is complete and we'll go on to our next which is this short. Um, it is a cap that looks just like the other except that it has a pin um, in the center there. That's our short. So we'll go ahead and thread that on there. Nope. Oh, look at that. We got some lines jumping around as we get that threaded into place. 
And again, we'll watch the very top there for a progress bar as we tap the short. And now that portion is complete. And we're on to our final, which is the load cap. Um, and this one has a different color to it as silver instead of all gold. It does have a little pin in it. And we're going to thread that on there. Make sure as you look over your kit that you identify the caps correctly so you get an accurate measurement. Um, and then of course we're going to tap on load here. And we notice the progress bar there on the top. And we can click done. Um, notice the letters over here on the side. Um, have turned white and we have a calibration that shown here that gives you the range that we are calibrating 144 megahertz through 148 um, we could save that um, we're going to skip that step but if you want to uh, make a calibration and come back to it over and over you do not need to go through this entire process you can click save and hold that for later uh, we're going to go back for now and work on getting our first measurement done now with the load on there, it's kind of perfect. So that's not totally real. And now we're going to go on to using um, one of these uh, little jumper cables that you'll have with your kit. It's a little SMA to SMA male. So you do need an adapter. I've got an adapter to attach to my jumper cable, my patch cable uh, from an SMA up to a PL259. And we just need to thread it into place. That allow us to go from the SMA on our device to the LMR 400 that I've got in my system going up to the antenna on the roof. And we'll just thread this in place. And you can see my coax there. We're gonna add that to our measurement system here. And I'll get that threaded into place. And now we're getting a reading. And if we can get our camera to focus, there we go. And it's really quite as simple as that. Uh, once we uh, have gotten a reading, um, notice that our trace is listed there. We're looking at port one or S11. And it does tell us in the white text there what um, the SWR reading is at measurement point 148 megahertz. And then we can use our jog wheel at the top there. It's a little bit hidden by the cord. And you just see it there at the very top. And if you move it to the left, notice as it goes along, the white text here marked as M1 will move in correspondence. You can see exactly what your SWR reading is at any given point on that line. There's another menu setting here that to help us fine tune our measurement. So if we go back in there and we go to the marker and we can search maximum and minimum, which is kind of a nice handy little feature there. So there's our minimum, just over one SWR. So very nice, I like that. And maximum is one, just over 1.3 there. And if we tap away the menu, we can see um, our highest point is a, at 144 megahertz. So there you go, there's a whirlwind run through how to make an SWR reading with your Nano VNA. I hope you found this useful and you will come back for a future video. Talk to you later.